Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 3rd, 2017. This first article is from my friend Bob H. And it's from the Seattle Times. Paul Allen's colossal strata launch plane emerges from its lair. Yeah, if you look at this thing, it's hard to even get a scale from this. You can kind of tell that it is rather large, but actually it's fully it's its full weight is uh, equivalent to a fully loaded A380, which is the largest commercial craft, I think, in regular operation now. But anyway, I'll give you a little bit from the article here. This is a, uh, a launch system for satellites that was proposed quite a while ago and has been delayed numerous times. Uh, Paul Allen's 250-ton strata launch airplane finally rolled out of its hangar Wednesday in Mojave, California. It won't launch a rocket into space any sooner than 2019, and strata launch faces skepticism about its business plans for delivering satellites to orbits. Uh, Paul Allen's monstrous... Uh, it will say, I'll go. I'll skip on down here. It will now spend many months on ground testing before a first flight, and is not expected to be used to launch a rocket into space any sooner than 2019. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be just, I mean, a tremendous weight. The uh, it says here, Gene Floyd, chief executive executive at Strata Launch Systems, said in a statement that the empty plane, powered by six U-747 engines, weighs approximately 500,000 pounds and it will weigh more than one million pounds fully loaded in the uh, uh, it's intended to carry a rocket slug beneath the central part of the wing between the two fuselages and release it at 35,000 feet. Uh, the concept is that the rocket will then launch into space and deliver satellites into orbit. So, uh, yeah, uh, the problem is right now, though, that satellites that are being launched tend to be getting smaller and smaller rather than the large satellites about the size of a minivan. They're getting to smaller and smaller satellites, so they don't really know if this will be an efficient type of system to use. Um, maybe if they could launch two, three, or four of the smaller satellites simultaneously, I mean, at least you do recover your launch craft. You fly it up into the air 35,000 feet, launch the satellites, and then bring most of the stuff back. I mean, the launch platform at least, so um, you get some of the benefits like you do with SpaceX. But, yeah, being that it's taking so long, you already have uh, places like, you know, SpaceX and Blue Origin already doing it and uh, being able to reuse part of their spacecraft may be a little bit, too little, too late. I don't know. Don't know if it's feasible or not. I mean, there's one test model, and if something goes wrong with that and it crashes or something, uh, they don't like have a backup that I know of. So, best of luck to them. And next from Tech Times, oxygen. Uh, uh, this is Curiosity rover's discovery um, about um, oxygen, different oxygen levels across different depths. What this tells about life on Mars. This is. Um, Curiosity, Curiosity rover's discovery of the redox stratification on Gale Crater's lake allowed scientists to find evidence that Mars was once habitable, at least in the human sense, for a long time. Uh, oxygen redox um, layers means actually there were places where they know it was oxygen starved for a period of time, which means on the contrast part of it that there were uh, oxygen rich areas in the sediments. So that says that at least in sometimes in the past and for maybe longer than they think, there's evidence that Mars could have actually supported life. And it says now scientists have included from the evidence in Gale Crater that Mars once had a very Earth-like environment for about 700,000 years, sometime between 3.1 and 3.8 billion years ago. So what exactly does this mean for Martian life? The most exciting answer is that Martian life could really have existed and thrived, but things are not always so simple. Yeah, I, I'm still not really thinking that at the most if we uh, send up the next probe, which is supposed to do a little bit more digging and a little bit more capable of finding life, uh, I think we'll be very lucky if we even find multi-celled organisms. I mean, we may find single-celled organisms and things like that, uh, maybe some simple bacteria, simple viruses, but um, I don't know. I don't know over that period of time are we going to actually find anything that looks even like a simple uh, uh, creature with a seashell or a clam or a lobster or something like that. I don't think very likely. I mean, possible, but not very likely. So um, it says here, the researchers found that Mars experienced a climate change before it lost its atmosphere and became its, in its current condition. According to the study, Mars was first really cold before warming enough to have a stable Earth-like conditions before it dried up. The pattern seems eer eerily familiar. I don't know but by that if they're meaning that, you know, that it's something they think is going to happen with the Earth in the future or not. But anyway. Quite interesting article if you get a chance to check it out. And last up, from the New Jersey Herald, hackers break into centralized password manager One Login. Hackers have gained access to One Login, an online password manager that offers a single sign 
and on multiple websites and services. One login said in a blog post that it couldn't rule out the possibility that hackers got keys to read encrypted data such as stored passwords. That tells me that there is a back door to it then or a master key. You want to call it either way you want to call it. I think the right kind of encryption, if you're buying encryption software to encrypt passwords, financial information, or any kind of files whatsoever, it should be that the customer's encryption is just locked into that customer themselves and there shouldn't be any backdoor any way. Um, in other words, like if I use encryption software such as VeraCrypt or TrueCrypt um, and encrypt some files or encrypt whatever I choose to encrypt, there should be no way. I mean, the company should be able to tell me, hey, you're out, you're out of luck. If you want us to, to decrypt it, basically, there's no backdoor, there's no passwords, there's no master key. If you've encrypted it and you've lost your own password, we can't decrypt it for you. So telling me that they have lost something that puts passwords at risk tells me that they had a master key or you might might as well call it a backdoor. So I don't like that idea at all. That tells me that they got something in there to maybe in the future help out the FBI or the government or you know, and, and I'm, I'm not saying necessarily I'm against it in, in all cases, you know, but the problem is you also leave it open if you do have a backdoor like that for hackers to get in and steal your stuff. So I, I always think it's more important to have the security so that you don't have the chances of a hacker stealing a master password or a backdoor and we'll just live with the fact that, yeah, maybe the bad guys can encrypt stuff that the good guys will never be able to unencrypt. Oh, well, we'll just have to live with that. So. That's my thing on that. It's it's not a very long article. It's maybe about only five paragraphs or so, but basically that's the gist of it. And uh, that tells me that one login, no, that was not something that was trustworthy or something to be used. So be very careful about stuff you want encrypted. The reason why I use TrueCrypt and VeraCrypt is they're open source, so anybody can look at the code to see if anybody's put a backdoor in or there's any kind of a weakness in it or anything like that. And so far. I haven't seen any credible evidence that there is any weakness, and if any ever is found in the future, they can correct it and do an upgrade to it because it is—it's open source. Everybody can look at the code. Everybody can look at how it's—you know—how the program is written. There's nothing secret about it. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.